process called forum shopping. And here's the way that worked. Uh, let's say that you or one of your viewers uh, uh, got an item through the Medicare system uh, here in Tennessee. Let's say you got a wheelchair pad. Well, now it just so happens that the Medicare biller in Pennsylvania will pay three times more for a wheelchair pad than the Medicare biller in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So unscrupulous operators would simply buy these invoices at the Tennessee price, take them to Pennsylvania and bill them with Medicare in Pennsylvania and realize really enormous profits. So uh, we've closed that loophole and uh, uh, by calculation of the Bush administration, the Office of Management and Budget, uh, this ought to save Medicare about a billion dollars over the next five years. I think that was uh, primarily what we, we, you know, we wanted you to uh, emphasize, Senator, right. because this is one of the areas that we're all concerned with, and this has to do with cost containment. And, no question about uh, it. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Haney, if we can save a billion dollars mm -hmm. just by cutting out abuse and inefficiencies, then that's a billion dollars more that's available mm -hmm. to be used to help the Medicare patients uh, who, who need, uh, who need mm -hmm. the help. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing to go through the system uh, and try to find ways where we can make uh, uh, the whole Medicare system more cost efficient and cost effective. And of course, Senator, uh, another area that would uh, be within that uh, cost effective area would be uh, prescription gr drugs. I think you've done quite a bit of work in that area and uh, as a matter of fact, I think the same thing you can say about abuse and overcharge in uh, the equipment area uh, was uh, also present in the drug area. And let's talk about prescription drugs and some of the legislation that you were able to uh, enact. Well, when you talk about prescription drugs, uh, with most consumers out there, their first reaction is, oh, they cost so much money. Uh, and indeed, indeed they do, no question about that. And uh, uh, we have done a study of the cost of prescription drugs, and we find that prescription drugs are going up about three times faster than the general rate of inflation, and have been doing that since our study began uh, in 1980. And uh, we find that many uh, people, particularly older people on fixed incomes, or uh, people of uh, limited means, mm -hmm. simply cannot afford uh, to buy their medications. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uncommon to run across an individual who may be uh, having medications that mm -hmm. cost uh, two, three, four thousand dollars a year. And uh, so they simply can't afford to buy them. So we have, uh, investigated this uh, to some extent and we find that many of the major pharmaceutical manufacturers are simply overcharging. Uh, I don't think that it's a abuse of the term to say that some of them are actually profiteering uh, in my judgment. Now not all of them, I want to make that clear, but there are some who simply are uh, overcharging and I think uh, charging prices that are unconscionable really to a lot of uh, very ill people who need these drugs. And you've been uh, successful in getting legislation in to deal with that. Well, we've been uh, successful uh, mm -hmm. in introducing the mm -hmm. legislation, mm -hmm. Dr. Haney. Uh, mm -hmm. We've not been successful yet in getting it passed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've introduced legislation in conjunction mm -hmm. or together with uh, Senator David Pryor of Arkansas. Uh, Senator Pryor of Arkansas has also been uh, a great proponent of trying mm -hmm. to keep down medical costs. And we've introduced legislation which would uh, take away some of the tax incentives mm -hmm. from the major drug manufacturers, the pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. if they continue to raise their prices mm -hmm. substantially faster than mm -hmm. the uh, uh, general rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. We've also, in that legislation, uh, uh, call for studies and commissions mm -hmm. to develop ways we can reduce uh, drug prices mm -hmm. and get drugs to consumers at a lower price. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sorry to say that, I'm sad mm -hmm. to inform you mm -hmm. that when this legislation came up for a vote on the floor of the Senate, uh, we just got uh, about 38 votes for it. We got to have 51 mm -hmm. to win, you know. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back again in trying to persuade other senators mm -hmm. to support our legislation, and I'm hopeful and optimistic mm -hmm. we can.
Another legislative area, uh, Senator, uh, has to do with home health care. And uh, our viewers are very familiar with some of the controversies that have uh, developed in this city uh, in reference to home health care, but most of that has been aimed at Medicaid uh, mm -hmm. rather than Medicare. But let's talk about those systems uh, and, and, and some of the uh, problems that you were able to encounter yeah. in the home health care business and some of the legislation uh, that you propose and, and what we might be able to do to assist you in making uh, what you're trying to do uh, much more widely known in the state of Tennessee. Well, Dr. Haney, uh, home health care uh, is an excellent concept. And if we can, if people can be treated in their homes and don't have to go into a hospital uh, or a nursing home, for example, uh, we find that first off it's more economical, costs less to treat them at home. And secondly, people seem to do better at home if they can get adequate home health care. So the concept of home health care is an excellent one. Now what we've seen though is that there's been a virtual explosion in the cost of home health care over the past uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And some of this can be attributable to operators, home health care providers mm -hmm. that simply provide health care at home mm -hmm. that the recipient doesn't need mm -hmm. and doesn't want. I mean, we've had instances of, for example, uh, uh, there are specialists who teach people how to speak when their vocal cords have been damaged mm -hmm. or removed as a result of a cancer operation. Uh, we've had instances where some of these speech therapists, for example, will come by every day, sometimes twice a day, mm -hmm. to see a patient mm -hmm. at home, bill the home health care system thousands or tens of thousands of dollars when one visit perhaps a week mm -hmm. would have been satisfactory just a whole host of things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're looking into this business of home health care mm -hmm. to see if we can't make that more cost efficient mm -hmm. and uh, slice out uh, the abuse mm -hmm. that's in it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Senator Phillip, uh, let's talk about uh, the budget. Uh, uh, as you've indicated, uh, you're uh, involved with the uh, Appropriations Commission, I mean, uh, Committee and Senator, in the uh, Senate. And uh, you can give us some insight in, ter in terms of what is going on now with the budget and in terms of the economy in general, because many of us are simply confused in terms of whether or not we're coming out of this recession, or whether or not we're going deeper into a recession, mm -hmm. and what should we do? Well, uh, I'm not sure I know precisely what to do, uh, Dr. Haney. Um, we have gone through the longest uh, recession, really, uh, since the Second World War uh, in the past uh, 18 months or two years. Now, it has not been the deepest recession since the Second World War, but this has been the longest recession since the Second World War in the sense that we've had either no economic growth or negative economic growth for about three years. Interestingly enough, and I think your viewers might be interested in this, the last three years has been the only time since the Great Depression of the 1930s in which we had a net negative decline in uh, economic growth when you compare it to, to the population generally. What's that mean? It means that the quality of life or standard of living of the average uh, Tennessean uh, has probably declined uh, uh, slightly over the past three years rather than getting better. Well, now, what's the outlook for the future? Uh, most economists are telling us that this economic recovery that we hope mm -hmm. we're in now mm -hmm. is going to be uh, an anemic recovery. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a strong, robust recovery like we've had in times past. Uh, and I, along with others, as you know, are trying to take steps mm -hmm. to stimulate the economy so that we will have a robust recovery we will create a lot of jobs and people will, their living standards will go up. We had an opportunity, Senator, to uh, see